Oh, the system. mic's working, everything's working. Is this Tech working? Is working. No, it is working. So, guys, just before we start, though, can we give UX India a massive round of applause as well? Honestly, thank you guys Seriously, so much. Guys. Such yeah. a Fantastic. Thank you all so much for having us for, in the first place. It's our first visit to Bangalore. Uh, we're grateful to be here. We've been so welcomed by everyone. So, so seriously, thank you very much. I think the premise of today's conversation is essentially, we're not talking about Bros & Co. We're not talking about any clients. We're simply talking about design for designers. Now, that's a conversation we rarely have. We always talk about design in the context of a problem that's given to us. But now, ever since we opened our own consultancy and had the ch chance, I'd probably say the freedom to think for ourselves, we've had so much ability to be able to say, actually, what are the problems that we face as a design community that we're simply not ready for. So one of the things that we really, pre uh, it's this prevalent problem that we're, we're facing at the moment is the concept of sustainability. So when we talk about sustainability, we talk about users and user needs and user pain points. And if you're lucky, you might get into business conversation, talk about business needs, but we need to think way beyond this. So we're thinking very simply about this kind of two-way relationship between a business and the user. But what we really want to do is now try to triangulate that what are the planetary pain points that we have and the unforeseen outcomes and impact we're having from our designs that we're not talking about. So it's not as designers we need to think beyond the user, it's actually as designers it's our complete responsibility. And we'll try to quantify that responsibility for you today so you have a good idea of the amount of impact we as a generation of designers have already had and also what we can, can do in the next couple of years ahead of us. So we want to make this useful for you not just us presenting to you, but we're gonna give you stuff. So what we've got is three tools. Two of the tools we're gonna give you, give you so you can take them away, use them inside your organizations as you please. But also those tools have complete user guides and specifications on how to use them, we'll, we'll get there. So um, the three tools are gonna to talk about sustainability. And now the reality is sustainability is bloody complicated. So anyone that talks to you about sustainability, the problem you have at the first outset is what the heck do you mean by sustainability? So this hasn't been a problem that I'm talking about now. This has been a problem for, for, for many, many years. So when we say sustainability, sustainability is under the concept of sustainable development, which is the world that we work in, is sustainable development satisfies the needs of, our, of the present without adversely affecting the conditions for future generations. So this is something that we're not only now designing product services for clients, we're designing it for our children and our grandchildren. Now, this was something that came out of the Brundtland Report in 1987. This is years and years ago, right? This is, this is a long time ago, maybe before some of us were in the industry. This got then expanded upon um, at the Rio de, Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit in 1992, where they tried to say, okay, when we say sustainable development, what is it specifically that we mean? And what they try to tell you here is actually we're talking about environmental factors, social factors, and governance, so governmental factors, how we operate, are we ethical? Now, this, if you go into any finance, anyone, the JP Morgan folks are around here as well, what you'll start to realize is many markets are now provisioned around these three categories. So we'll determine how well you perform in the market based upon these three f categories. And if you're not doing well, they're gonna devalue your organization in the market. So these things are really tangible things, mean a lot to organizations. But still, the problem we have is a lot of financial services um, organizations they look at these and they say, okay, fantastic, but we're gonna make our own subcategories inside each of these, and now we've got another mess. So the United Nations came together and said, actually, we're gonna tell you what it is, rather than you try to tell us what it is. So we have something called 17 sustainability goals. Now inside these goals, um, they, they try to quantify and try to tell you which parts of ESG are related to these categories in these different areas. So you never had a presenter take a picture of the audience, right? Do you know what? I just thought that everyone's taking photos of us <laughs> and you guys look amazing. So I thought I'd take a photo of yeah. you guys as well if yeah. you didn't mind. That's great. So, <laughs> so with, with this concept, you've got 17 different goals, but what does sustainability mean? It's a question for everyone, right? It's a difficult one. What does it mean? So this is a learning from us where we failed as founders of an organization. We thought sustainability meant this. So we put all of our efforts, all of our thinking knowledge, all of our um, kind of passion, I'd say, you kind of direct your passion when you say sustainability, you direct it to something. So we direct it to this concept of climate action. We said, okay, this is exactly what it means. And, and just as a, a hands around the room, because I'm, I'm sure that we're not the only ones that thought it was just that, but just how, did everyone else think it was probably just about climate action and climate change? So just a raise of hands, just so I don't feel alone at this point? 
amazing. Yeah, I'll put my hand up as well. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of you doing empathy, so I really appreciate that as well. I'm sure you guys are a lot smarter than that. <laughs> so it's great. Thank you. So, so the problem with this is this concept of tunnel vision. But even at any echelon inside any organization, whether you talk to CEOs of massive companies, they have the same problem, tunnel vision. So we started to think, actually, we need to break out of this and we need to figure out how we design for designers, not how do you design for clients anymore. So what we did was we created three different um, kind of maturity scales for everyone inside the room today. So essentially what we're talking about here is first we're going to talk about, well, Amdi's going to co cover the concept of aligning goals. So it essentially means what does sustainability mean to everyone and how do we align our goals around this concept. And then there's another concept we're going to talk you through, which is expand this perception of design. And we'll talk to you about the journey that we've been on where designs only had a limited perception. And then the final one is how do you measure the amount of carbon you're producing in a product or service. So I'm going to hand over to Amadeep, who will walk you through the clicker. He'll walk you through um, the alignment of goals around sustainability. Awesome. Thank you, Gamut, for that. Awesome. So, so guys, so what you can see on screen and what you'll see in a second is um, I'm going to be talking to you more about the sustainability goals canvas that we've created. Um, it's a very simple tool. It'll be the simplest tool that you'll see today out of the three of them and is intended to do so because obviously sustainability is a journey. It's something that we're all on and it's not about the most advancements within sustainability. The idea is that you can basically meet you and your clients where they are in that journey. So having something really simple um, and something that's quick to do is obviously something that's really quite attractive. Um, so everyone's on their own journey, both an individual basis, also as a company, as a community. So this one's really intended as, the, as a Kickstarter to having those conversations in a quick fashion. Um, it has come, up, come out a bit pixelated, but don't worry about that, guys. As Gavin mentioned originally, uh, we will be sharing out links so you can download all of these things. I still love the fact that everyone pulls their mobile phones out and takes a picture of it. I love that, so please continue. Um, so inside of this, um, I'm just going to walk you through this canvas. So it's hopefully quite simple and self-explanatory, but again, um, you know, I didn't want to assume anything. So across the horizontal there, guys, you can see the 17 UN initiatives around sustainability, the ones that Gurmeet was showing you just before. Um, what's really important about that is that you should always have a recognizable framework. So instead of going off and creating your own new frameworks around this, you have to understand this is a planetary problem, and therefore having something that's recognizable that you can all share and also align on on your companies is super important. So across the top there you can see the 17 different UN um, uh, initiatives and I'm going to talk you through the rest of the actual documentation uh, on the other side just now. So let me see if that comes through. Okay, so uh, we conducted this conversation and this exercise with our team a couple of months ago. It only took less than an hour to get through, so it doesn't actually, it may look a bit intimidating, but it's actually really, really quick to do. Um, and the first thing that we did as a team was we actually started to vote upon the initiatives that meant the most to each one of our team members. Again, climate change and climate action is something we can feel really passionate about, but what was really brilliant was that we started to see that other people thought about other things, and other, other initiatives were really, really deeper and close to the heart. So you vote about those, and then you get into groups around it. After that, then what you do in the second swim lane is then we start to think about what are we doing as a company, as Bros & Co in this context, but again related to your own companies if you're, if you're established inside of one, what are we doing as a community, and then also what are you doing as an individual participation with inside that space. And then that's where we start to sort of document what those things were. Then directly underneath that we start to look at what is the change that you'd like to see inside of those spaces. So again, hypothesizing, coming up with some initial concepts, and really thinking through that, of, in the change of that vertical, what do you want to see happen? And then, really importantly, because we're all designers here and we're quite visual thinkers in itself, what does that look like? So that doesn't need to be a full-blown, full-scale prototype. It could just be literally a scamp or a sketch. It could be something that we can all convey and get our ideas around and go, to head, go ahead and make sure that we're all aligned on what that could actually be in terms of solutionization. The last swim lane there is just as important, measurement. So at Bros & Co, and this is something that me to myself fundamentally believe in, we don't believe that design is just an aesthetic. It's a measuring tool. It's something that we can actually go ahead and ensure that we're making an impact and therefore from zero to one, what does that measurement really look like? So in regards to any of the effort across any of those particular initiatives, how are you going to measure them? And we're going to actually talk about some of those tools later on in this presentation, but you could also not necessarily have a tool inside of that. It could just be about awareness. So once we filled it in, um, this is a, um, an after uh, after effect version of, uh, of us actually conducting the exercise. So you can start to see the team start to populate those aspects out. Um, 
you start to see that we actually start to document some of the initiatives that we were actually doing as a community and a company inside, but we also started to get some really great ideas around some of the partnerships that, that we should be making uh, globally as well as locally, um, and how we can all start to work together, because basically, when we talk about sustainability, it's not a one company solution, it's a planetary problem, and it needs planetary types of thinking around it and partnerships in, according to that. Um, but what we can happily say is that now we are committed to those six UN um, initiatives that you can see that as a company, you can see that we didn't go after all 17, we can't, and hopefully we maybe we won't do one so. So also think about what you're not going to do as well as what you are going to do. Oh, you need some more to ask, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a problem. Um, so with inside that space, um, I just want to let you know that you're not alone, and obviously here's only three of a huge number, an array of different companies that have pledges to net zero and their commitments to them. So here we obviously have Nike, we have Google, and we have Lego. What was really interesting about them was that you can go on their websites today because what they do is they see sustainability as a stakeholder. They see sustainability as a partnership with inside their organization. So therefore, it allows people to openly and transparently track their performance on their annual reports. It's a great way to, a great way to remain accountable uh, to their stakeholders, customers, and to the planet. And it's great to see that they have this level of transparency and also where they can ask for help in regards to other uh, partnerships that they can go ahead and do. Um, uh, we also had a thought about this, and I want you to think about this as well, around, you want to take this? Not a problem at all. <laughs> um, you want to really think about um, how you can share and be accountable for sustainability in terms of your goals, both as an individual, a community, and a company. Um, and with that, I'd like to hand back over to Gurmit. So that's the easiest one, right? So that's something you guys can take into your organization and use immediately. Now, what we're going to talk to you now about is, okay, Who's a service designer in the room? Raise your hand. Couple. Who does research in the room? Raise your hand. That should be everyone. Trick question. Brilliant. If your hand's not up, it should be up. Everyone does research. OK, so this applies to absolutely everyone. So when we say circular blueprint canvas, I'm going to have to speed up a little bit. Is essentially what we mean is we haven't really been creating anything circular as a design community. Why is that? It's not because anyone's at fault inside the room. It's essentially the world we live in. We live in, a com in an economy called the linear economy. And there's essentially three stages. I had the first one there, which is we take those natural resources, we extract them from the world, we take them, we then make something, and then we wa waste it, essentially just throw it away. Now, that has been the main premise of our job. We create products and services, we take, we make, and then if you're lucky, you might talk about recycling. Most projects don't. So when we talk about what we make, or what we've been doing as a design community for many years, remember, we're talking about designing for designers, not, not for our clients. What we're doing here is we're saying, okay, within those two spectrums of take and make, we've essentially limited our entire perspective of design. But remember, this is not anyone's fault. This is how the economy is made. Then we create these things called service blueprints, which are exactly linear as well in their own right, from aware to in life, and at the end of the day, exiting those products or services. But you can start to see, actually, there is a limited perspective. So, so what has that limited perspective done to us as a community? So what it has meant is, over that period of time, we've created an ecological burden because we haven't looked at the entire problem. We look at one area of problem, or whatever the brief tells us. Now, the ecological burden that we see as a planetary species is essentially 35 billion tons comes of, of carbon is produced per year. And if you're born around my time, you're around 22 billion tons of uh, carbon is produced by your generation per year. That's us. That's all of us. I'm sure there's a lot of other people that are a lot younger than you. I'm sure you're younger it. than us, and then you're so, like, totally fine. So you, so you, have a lesser, you have a lesser commitment to it just yet. Yeah. So, uh, so, just so, so what we did here was we created something called a circular blueprint canvas, where essentially we, we want to move away from these linear, linear thinking. So in the first circle you see there, it's about responsible material extraction. Now, a lot of people are probably like, well, well, I only make apps. No, you don't. You don't you, an, an app is an experience to provision the rest of the organization that you service, right? You're not, you're not making an app. You're making an online company. So when you say about material extraction, look at the entire service provisioning. But also, it could just simply be electricity as material extraction. And then in eco-sensitive design, think about designing for circularity. Whatever carbon or whatever um, services or materials that you have, how can you recycle it at the design stage? Then um, service onboarding and marketing, so how you make people aware. How do you do that in a low carbon environment? Minimizing distribution and packaging. We'll show you some examples of this. In life usage, which is what we do, our bread and butter. 
Um, repair and maintain, so we don't really talk about that, but there's actual uh, EU laws coming to play where people have to be able to ma maintain their own products independently of any company. And then how do you recycle it back into the, the circular economy itself, your own circular economy? So we took an example here and we said, actually, what you're kind of doing now, which is not what design's done in the past, is you're linking the supply chain to the design and manufacturing. Then you're linking the product servicing and provisioning and the distribution of it to, to the customers. And then at the final stage, you're linking how you repair, recycle, and circulate the materials or, or the service itself. But I'm not circulating outside the org, I'm circulating it for myself inside the org. Now, what we did was we gave an example, Patagonia. Everyone heard of Patagonia? It's not big, not so big in India. Okay, I'll get you an India one later. But basically, Patagonia, they make um, rough wear. So uh, if you're going hiking, you've got hiking shoes and hiking boots, they make really nice clothes, actually. So what they said was, we're going to become a circular business. They changed the entire business model. So what that meant was, they're going to only extract material from farms that have enough provisions to uh, regenerate for the amount that they take. They're going to work with small businesses. They're going to also work in specific countries and refuse other countries that don't meet their standards. Then you have eco-sensitive design and manufacturing, where fair work, uh, living wages for everyone, but also you're designing at this level in circularity. You're also um, communicating to customers via digital, digital means, which is the most eco-friendly. But look at minimizing the distribution or packaging. What they did was they simply did this, folded the thing, 50% less packaging. And then they went further and said, actually, if I fold it, why don't I roll it? Now people don't have to iron it. And they put them into these, I should put a bigger picture, but they put them into these hexagon uh, containers. Those hexagon containers get posted to you. But you could go to the shop, you'll see the same hexagon container as if you bought it and it kept, got posted to you. So they're completely reusing. Um, in life usage, it's not only about the product, they also talk to you about the use of um, online communities to understand how, how um, circularity works. Finally, they got this area called, if it's, fixed, if it's broken, we'll fix it. So if something tears on your garment, they take it to them, they'll fix it for free. Other companies like Dr. Martin are now doing the same. And nothing's wasted is a beautiful concept that if there's something that's so badly deteriorated, they'll take away the parts that they can and they'll make materials and, and um, uh, clothing for animals yeah. out of all that. Yeah. So nothing, as little waste as possible. Yeah. Just, just to be clear, Patagonia did not sponsor this, this presentation. Just to, <laughs> not yet. No, not anyway. yet, maybe. So basically, what we've got here, if you just simply take Don Norman's principles of this, so it's all about minimizing waste pollution, keep products in life for as long as possible, and regenerate the natural systems that you've taken from. And this is an easy example. Take your service blueprints that you have and simply map them to the circular economy and the gaps will show themselves. And then you'll naturally have the right conversations. The last one I'm gonna talk about, and I've only got 15 seconds. Please give me a few more seconds, yeah? Two more minutes. All right, the audience is saying, yeah, woo! All right, awesome. So, okay, so if we got uh, two more minutes, I'll quickly run through this. This one is something that we as Bros Co, as the team, have heavily invested in, it's called the carbon method. Um, I'll give you the URLs and stuff in a moment, but essentially it's a methodology that allows you to quantify the amount of carbon, quantify the amount of carbon in a product or service before you make it. Um, what we've done here is we've had to think out of the box. So we essentially had to create a sustainability methodology, which is about um, measuring track and reduction. It works in line with the design thinking framework. So if you know design thinking, you don't need to be retrained. That's not the purpose of it. And what we got done then was we created something called carbon cards, which um, simplifies the carbon data. So you don't have to be a mathematician. You can easily navigate these. And it's digital, so all the carbon data updates for you. And then finally, the last one is we created something called carbon kits. So loads and loads of um, uh, canvases that allow you to measure by ESG, measure by operations, measure by organization, measure by product, measure by service. Measure. There's a lot in there. So then what we did then was we said, okay, the data is not easy. Carbon data is really, really hard. So what we did was we took three key data points to make the carbon data. So we took embodied uh, carbon, which is the material that went into the extraction, the extracted material in the ground, that itself is carbon. So how much carbon went into the extracted uh, material? Then we went to emb embedded energy, embodied energy, which is essentially how much energy went into refining that material to something we can use, yeah? And then the final one is a regional energy mix. So if you extracted and refined the material in India, 
It'll have a different carbon calculation from doing it in the UK, from doing it in France, from doing it in Belgium. It always changes because everyone has a local energy mix. So with all this, what we got is uh, carbon averages. I will be very quick. And then all it is here... 30 is, seconds. 30 seconds, 30 <laughs> seconds, fine. So all it is here is the carbon data has been simplified into simple cards that you can use and you can change by regions and change by volumes. And what we've done is um, we've matched it to a database. So what we're asking our clients to do is take this, make carbon actuals, because you know more data than anyone else, and give it to the world. Give it to everyone. So we can move away from carbon averages into carbon actuals. We have the highest performance data. We've also got all the data validated by Brunel University, our own university. The professors there did an academic peer review. And if you want to use it, you can use it simply. You can just apply it to a, a service blueprint, add a carbon layer to the bottom, and quantify each stage how much carbon is being produced. We even tell you how to live with carbon in your service, so how to remove it in other ways. Or you could do it in the circular economy, where you can start to, to capture it. So in summary, <laughs> I'm going to get told off. He's going to jump me. So in summary, where we ask you to think beyond the user, think about aligning goals, how you expand your perception of design, and how you can measure your impact. And the last little gift from us is you can find these and download them online, right? And not only download them, it's got the whole narrative on how to use them as well. Um, so try to use these, uh, you know, in, 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 in your little teams and your big teams and your companies and your organizations. So who feels a little bit more empowered about sustainability and they can actually do something about it inside their org? Yeah? Oh, that's a good, that's a good number. Awesome.